today about the complications of, يعني about continue the, يعني previous lecture about the gallbladder, gallstones, and the biliary, يعني biliary uh, three surgery. Uh, after colonoscopy, the patient should be in good health condition and discharge well. But if the patient develop any symptoms, if he develop fever, chills, abdominal pain, this require immediate investigation uh, because he may develop serious complications. And the mortality, operative mortality of colonoscopy is less than one percent. The factors increasing the risk of postoperative mortality include. Uh, advanced age, uh, comorbid uh, conditions, acute presentation of the condition, and the serious complication of laparoscopic colostectomy fell in two major areas. Number one, excess complications. Excess, it means the procedure we perform to insert the uh, pores inside the abdomen to reach the gallbladder. Yani, and you, you will have a, a lecture about laparoscopy and robotic surgery. This is called excess complications, how we access to the abdomen by installation of various needle, gas, CO2 gas, inflation of the abdomen cavity. This may produce in, yeah, any complications, injury to the bowel or vascular injury. The second uh, complication is due to bile duct injury. And the bile duct injury, as I told you previously, there are a lot of congenital anomalies. There may be short cystic artery uh, duct, yani maybe double cystic artery, maybe other congenital anomalies, duct, abnormal duct from the liver to the gallbladder, which is called what uh, yeah, it, is, uh, it is called the polycysto hepatic duct. Or the gallbladder may be inflamed, okay? So these may cause bile duct injury. Bile duct injury, either obstruction or leak. If there is injury, there may be bile leak. By a leak, which manifests itself either uh, as a يعني, condition or if we put a drain, it will يعني, discharge in the drain. If there is no drain, there may be biliary peritonitis. So these are the major causes of complications. Uh, the cause of obstruction, uh, the cause of complication is poor dissection and failure to define the surgical anatomy adequately. Okay. So any patient develop jaundice post-operatively or abdominal pain should be investigated. First step in management of patients with complication of cholecystectomy, uh, colon resuscitation and appropriate antibiotics, we should do ultrasound. This is very important. It is simple, non-invasive, cheap, available, and ultrasound to find if there is any collection or if there is any dilatation of the biliary tree if the patient develops jaundice. Also, we can use ERCB, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. And this has two benefits, diagnostic and therapeutic. Or we can use also MRCP, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. This collab, uh, this is without contrast. The bile itself, the bile itself, uh, it, it will appear as a contrast. Well, MRCB is in without contrast. In ERCB, we can insert a stent, we can remove the stone if there is biliary stone, uh, we can stent if there is any, any uh, leak. So, fluid collection in the subhepatic space needed drainage. And 15% uh, of injury to the bile ducts are recognized at the time of operation. Yani during operation, not all the injury of the uh, biliary tree can be recognized, only 15%. And most of these injuries to the biliary tree will appear later on, post-operatively. About 85% will appear later on, as a case of either, as we mentioned, jaundice, biliary peritonitis, or bile leak. Uh, so, the, uh, if the patient developed serum, uh, an elevated serum bilirubin, suggested damage to the uh, biliary tree, uh, alkaline serum, alkaline phosphatase also may be increased, and this may need a proper investigation, as we said. Uh, late symptoms after colonoscopy, yani what is called post colonoscopy syndrome. Post colonoscopy syndrome, to lab, <laughs> where the patient 
it's still the patient develop pain. It's still the patient have pain, not improved after colistectomy. It still have dyspepsia and pain. This may be either due to the presence of a stone in the bile duct, a stone in the bile duct may be causing this, or stone in the cystic duct stump. The cystic duct should be ligated and clipped flush with the common bile duct. But if it is a prolonged stump, sometimes the surgeon afraid to causing injury as a structure to the common bile duct. This is not appropriate because the stump of the cystic duct, if it's prolonged, may develop a stone in it or may develop this symptom, both called sector syndrome. That's to say the pain is still there. And as we mentioned, the patient need ultrasound, MRCB and ERCB for the treatment. Now we will discuss the structure of the bile ducts. The causes of the structure narrowing of the bile duct, it is either congenital in a biliary atresia or bile duct injury or surgery, as we mentioned, after colistectomy. After colistectomy, may be causing injury to the bile duct, common bile duct or common hepatic duct. Or after cholidocotomy, or after gastrectomy, sometimes even after gastrectomy, or hepatic resection, or transplantation. So post-operative, this is called heterogenic. Yani by the surgeon induced by the surgeon as a complication of surgery. The third cause of biliary structure is inflammatory. Either the presence of its own, say the common bile duct, and these stones either formed inside the gallbladder and pass to the gall to the common bile duct, or primarily a stone formed in the biliary tree. Uh, or other causes cholangitis. Come on, this is uh, the presence of its own causing a cysts of bile with multiplication of bacteria and infection, cholangitis, or sometimes parasitic. Parasites in the common bile duct, or pancreatitis. You know, the common bile duct sharing the opening with the pancreatic duct in the second part of the duodenum, and so sometimes pancreatitis also causing uh, any damage to the uh, common bile duct, or sclerosing cholangitis and radiotherapy. If the patient have malignant tumors, for example, and treated by radiotherapy, this is also cause uh, biliary tract. Uh, yeah, the structure of bile duct. The other causes of structure are trauma. Sometimes, especially in our country, a lot of trauma with shell injury, police injury, or car accidents, other types of uh, injury, or idiopathic. So the causes of congenital biliary tree, either congenital or post-operative, atherogenic or inflammatory, trauma, and idiopathic. Uh, how we investigate this patient? First of all, as I mentioned, ultrasound. Yeah, any jaundice patient, any jaundice patient to start with by ultrasound to see whether it is medical or surgical jaundice. Ultrasound is very simple test, cheap, available, without complications. And we can use it many times, you can repeat it. So by ultrasound to see if there is biliary tree dilatation. Once there is obstruction, there is proximal dilatation. This is a principle in life. And diamond I'm going to say to the students, if we see, let's say, a hole in the wall, it's clear that the hole in the wall is not clean. So when we see, let's say, dilated intrahepatic and extrahepatic bile ducts, that means that there is obstruction in the common bile duct. When we see hydronephrosis, and hydrourethral has a matter of obstruction of the ureter. With the same applied to يعني, uh, many aspects in the body. So ultrasound is very cheap, simple, يعني, without in, in not, not invasive, available, can be repeated. Very simple test to see if there is any dilatation. There, if there is dilatation, it means there is distal obstruction. Uh, other investigation we can use called angiography. Called angiography from STM Tolab. 
كل ان جيوغرافي ات مين في تي تيوب يعني اذا بيش وي بوت تي تيوب تي تيوب ات از ا تيوب لايك تي شيب the transverse process of the T put in the common bond duct and the longitudinal or vertical uh, part of the T tube will be يعني, from the outside of the body. This T tube, sometimes if there is injury to the biliary tree, we put T tube and do repair to prevent set rupture. Through this T tube, we can inject a dye, what is called T tube colon geography. So T tube, it is a tube, elastic tube, yani, a tube, yani, uh, like T shape. The transverse process put in the common bile duct after injury or exploration of the common bile duct. And the vertical end of the T tube uh, will be, uh, yani, pass it through the abdominal wall to the exterior to a collecting duct, a collecting the bag. And we can uh, put this T tube to prevent the structure, and we can inject a dye. Sometimes we can use even يعني, more and more colidocoscope and etc. Other investigation ERCB endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography. This is endoscopy passed through the mouth to the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, and to the second part of the duodenum, we can pass a catheter to the common bile duct and this catheter, we can inject a dye or we can uh, put a stent or we can remove if there is any remaining stone or if there is a picture in, uh, or stenosis on the lower end of the common bile duct, we can do what is called yani, a sphincteroplasty by cautery and we can put a catheter. Other investigation is MRCP, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography. MRCP, this MRCP, uh, as we mentioned, it is without contrast. Others is percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. From its percutaneous, we insert a needle. This needle passes through the uh, abdominal wall uh, to the liver. And we, يعني بالضبط شلون الكنيولا طلاب إحنا شلون الكنيولا ندخل الكنيولا ونسحب البلد إلى أن يجينا البلد ندخل الكنيولا نفس الشيء ذي شيء طبعا هذا بالإيجاز إحنا هسنا ونز نقدر نسعيد عنا بالإيجاز وبالأثر الفيزيكيشيز. So percutaneous transhepatic percutaneous it means through the skin transhepatic so through through the skin and through the to the liver cholangiography. We insert needle, the cheap needle, which is called cheap needle, and this we can uh, uh, aspirate bile and then put a catheter. Other investigation is CT scan, also to see dilatation of the biliary tree. Uh, parasitic infestation of the biliary tree. Uh, we are there are many parasites can infest the biliary tree. First of all, biliary ascariasis. You know ascaris, uh, the ascaris, warm ascaris, long ascar, long uh, uh, warm. This infests in the in small intestine, especially in the children. And uh, uh, ascaris like bile, it can be a travel from the small intestine to the duodenum and uh, through the lower end of the common bile duct, it passes to the uh, biliary tree. Or hydatis, you know, hydatis cysts is common in Iraq, and large hydatis cysts may obstruct the hepatic ducts, and uh, sometimes a cyst will rupture into the biliary tree and its contents, causing uh, obstructive jaundice or cholangitis, requiring appropriate surgery. Now we discuss the tumors of the bile ducts. We have, you know, any tumor, it may be benign tumor or malignant tumors. Benign neoplasm causing biliary obstruction may be classified as follows. Number one, it may be papilloma or adenoma from the mucosa or multiple biliary papillomatosis. Others as granular cell myoplastoma, neural tumors, leomyoma, and endocrine tumors. These are benign tumors may uh, affecting the biliary tree, causing obstructive jaundice. 
The other type of the tumors are malignant tumors of the biliary tree. What is called cholangiocarcinoma. Although it is rare, but the incidence is increasing. Most patients presented with abnormal liver function test, which is of yani obstructive type, increased serum alkaline phosphatase, increasing uh, serum uh, bilirubin, or the patient may be presented with a frank jaundice. Diagnosis, as we mentioned, by ultrasound, we will find dilated intrahepatic and extrahepatic biliary tree till the site of the tumor, or by CT scan, or by MRCB, as we mentioned uh, and repeated many times, that MRCB without contrast, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, MRCB. This is without use of contrast. In this patient, in this patient, the bile itself acts like a contrast. The same uh, in urology, in urology also what is called MRU. In cases of obstructive uh, disease, we can use it without contrast. So MRCP, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, without contrast, can be diagnosed uh, cholangiocarcinoma or any yani, site of obstruction of the biliary tree. The majority of patients receive palliative care only because cases of cholangiocarcinoma have bad prognosis. We cannot do radical and curable uh, surgery. Complete surgical excision possible in less than 10%. Usually they have late presentation with advanced disease and metastasis maybe. Prognosis poor, 90% die within one year. From liver failure because there is yeah, an obstruction of the bile, uh, common bile duct. Once there is obstruction, you know, the liver uh, secrete uh, bile in a rate of about 40 cc per hour. So if there is obstruction, well, they will stop uh, secretions of liver uh, and liver failure will occur. Or biliary sepsis. If there is obstruction, any obstruction anywhere in the body uh, causing multiplication of bacteria, and then invasion of this bacteria and become biliary sepsis with biliary cholangitis. So after surgery of the, uh, for the patient with cholangiocarcinoma, resection of the uh, of the tumor, uh, the patient may need adjuvant chemo radiation therapy, which, which is also has limited rule. There is no cure if there is advanced cholangiocarcinoma. There is factors for cholangiocarcinoma. Why this patient may develop cholangiocarcinoma? There may be predisposing factors. What are these risk factors? Number one, we have five major groups of risk factors for the patient to develop cholangiocarcinoma. Number one, chronic inflammatory condition, like primary sclerosing cholangitis, or oriental cholangiohepatitis, or hepatitis C infection. Look, so hepatitis C is very serious. It is very serious, it has yani, very bad prognosis. Hepatitis C, not just Yani inflammation of the liver, it had bad sequelae, and so you should be very yani careful. You should avoid wounds. You should avoid any injury, especially in your uh, training in the hospital or anywhere, because hepatitis C has very bad sequelae. One of its bad sequelae and complications is development of cholangiocarcinoma, which has bad prognosis. The other group of predisposing factors for cholangiocarcinoma, the risk factor, are parasitic infections, parasitic infestations. The other group is congenital, like cholidocal cysts. And as we mentioned previously in the first lecture, cholidocal cysts, this is congenital. Choli, it means bile. Docal, it means duct. So cholidocal cyst is cystic dilatation of the bile duct. Coli, bile, docal, it means duct. Coli docal cysts, it means cystic dilatation of bile duct. This is congenital anomaly. May affect any part of the uh, biliary tree of the common bile duct. And this is pre malignant. The patient may present it with jaundice. We discussed it in the previous lecture. 
and so should be removed with safe margin to ensure that removal of all the cases because this may develop cholangiocarcinoma. The other congenital abnormalities may develop uh, which is considered also a risk factor for cholangiocarcinoma is Carolis disease. Carolis, Carolis uh, scientist, and uh, this is cystic dilatation of the biliary tree. Intrahepatic cystic dilatation of the biliary tree. Other risk factors for cholangiocarcinoma are chemicals, chemical agents like uh, thorium dioxide, vinyl chloride, asbestos, and uh, this is asbestos. What is we also called group of disease, occupational disease. We you may study it in the community medicine, uh, occupational disease, asbestos. Uh, the other group of risk factors for cholangia concern are post-surgical, biliary enteric anastomosis. That is to say, for example, for example, a patient have we will discuss pancreas in the yani about three weeks later. We are, I will give you two lectures about the pancreas. If the patient have advanced tumor of the pancreas, unresectable tumor, and we or even after resection of the pancreatic tumor, we may do an osmosis between the common bile duct and the jejunum. We call it biliary enteric anastomosis. If the patient have CA pancreas and we remove this tumor, and we remove the lower end of the common bile duct. So the proximal part of the prox uh, of the common bile duct, we anastomose it with the jejunum. We call it biliary enteric anastomosis, or colidoco jejunostomy. Coli, it means bile. Doco, it means duct. Jejunostomy, so anastomosis between the bile duct and the jejunum. Colidoco, jejunostomy. This biliary enteric anastomosis may be a risk factor for cholangiocarcinoma. Okay, this colidoco, uh, uh, yeah, me or biliary enteric anastomosis may be a risk factor for cholangiocarcinoma. So the risk factors are either a chronic inflammatory conditions. Or parasitic infections, congenital cholecystic Caroli disease, chemical agents, and post-surgical biliary enteric anastomosis. The clinical features of cholecystic early symptoms of cholecystic are often non-specific, just abdominal pain, anorexia, weight loss, symptoms associated with biliary obstruction. You know, the jaundice if this obstructive jaundice, the patient may develop a pruritus. Uh, and in these patients, examination often demonstrates the clinical signs of jaundice, cachexia may be uh, uh, yeah, present, palpable gallbladder, if the obstruction is in the distal common bile duct, what is called curvature sign. This picture shows the computer tomograph scan demonstrating cholangiocarcinoma obstructing the common hepatic duct. And mag MR, uh, MRI, magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, showing the level of obstruction. So, how we investigate these species? These species need, first of all, biochemical investigations. The liver function test, uh, we will see, switch up on the patient in the presence of jaundice. There are elevated biliary, yani bilirubin, elevated uh, alkali phosphatase, shabab, you know, to lab. Alkali phosphatase is specific for the obstructive jaundice. Alkali phosphatase are gamma glutamyl transferase. Other than biochemical investigations, we can use imaging studies such as, as we mentioned previously, ultrasound, cheap, available, non invasive, can be repeated, or uh, MRI and MRCB are essential for diagnosis and staging, because as we mentioned, only 10% are, yani, are uh, yani can be removed this uh, tumor with good prognosis. 90% of yani, advanced tumor with, with bad prognosis. So these studies allow the level of biliary obstruction. Where is the tumor? In the lower end of the common bile duct, retroperitoneal, uh, part, 
or in the upper part, in the hepatic ducts, in the common bile ducts, and determine the local regional extent of the disease and the presence of metastasis. To see, can we treat it radically? Can we remove these tumors? Can we do after a section and a symbiosis between the proximal part of the biliary tree with the jejunum? So these, by this investigation, this will be determined. So causes of benign biliary structure, we mentioned these uh, causes. Uh, uh, congenital, like biliary atresia, bile duct injury after surgery, after colsectomy, cholidocotomy, gastrectomy, hepatic section, inflammatory in case of social trauma, as we mentioned, and idiopathic. In this picture, it shows sclerosing cholangitis in a patient with ulcerative colitis. So, in an inflammatory bowel disease, an inflammatory bowel disease, you, you will uh, يعني, take these lectures, ulcerative colitis, this have extra intestinal manifestation. What we call it sclerosing cholangitis. And this is visualized by endoscopic retrograde cholangiomatic electrography, ERCP. As we mentioned, ERCP, ERCP, E, it means endoscopic. R, retrograde cholangiomatic cholangiomatic electrography. We introduce the endoscope from the mouth, through the mouth, to the esophagus, to the stomach. Duodenum, and from the second part of the duodenum, uh, through the opening of the common bile duct, we introduce a uh, scope or the catheter into the common bile duct, and we inject a dye. And this dye will show the common bile duct at biliary tree. Also, this is the pancreatic duct, also very, uh, 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 very obvious. And it's not only injection of dye and visualize the biliary tree and bacteriotic tree, but also we can do maneuvers, we can do therapeutic tools, we can do if there is structure of the lower end of the camel by duct, we can do dilatation and say what we call it papillo, uh, papilloplasty, papillostomy and papillostomy and uh, papilloplasty. By cautery, special cautery, we can do incision in the ampulla of water. Uh, lower end of the common bile duct, and we can do dilatation. Also, we can introduce a catheter, and from this catheter, we can remove the stones. We have either a Fogarty biliary catheter or what is called the uh, dormia basket. To love a dormia basket, dormia has a small Italy. You start in a bottle of the channel and parallel, metal chemtia, like and parallel. ندخل هاي الشمسية خلي نقول مثل وهي مغلقة ندخلها وهي مغلقة الشمسية عن طريق السكند بارت اوف ذا جودينام نصعدها للقمر بارداك وبعدين نفتحها طبعا صغيرة نفتحها ورا ما وي باس ذا ستون ورا ما فتحنا الامبرلا الشمسية نقدر نسحبها للستون نسميها دورميا باسكت so if there is a stones in the common bile duct, we can remove it through this ERCP. Also, if there is a tumor, we can take a biopsy. And if there is bile leak, for example, after yeah, postoperatively, there is bile leak or from the cystic duct, for example, we can pass the catheter from the second part of the duodenum to the, uh, the common bile duct to pass these uh, the site of leak and uh, improve يعني, the general condition of the patient. So ERCB is very important uh, tool, very important investigation. It is used as a diagnostic and therapeutic purposes and has very يعني, a lot of advantage. So radiological investigation, we discuss it, these, all of the discuss it. Now we will discuss cancer of the gallbladder. Tumor, malignant tumors of the gallbladder. This is rare, really. It is very rare. But the problem is the patient have similar presentation to benign biliary disease. Uh, that to say, the patient may present with symptoms looks like gallstones, just dyspepsia, upper abdominal pain, may have jaundice. This is very important. This is why we should, in the investigation, we should execute a tumor. Sometimes in the gallbladder may be polyp, 
if this polyp more than one centimeter, it is suspicious, especially if it is irregular polyp. And with, with distortion of the wall of the gallbladder, and maybe invasion to the liver locally. Okay, so the patient presented with just dyspepsia, abdominal pain, jaundice, not necessarily 100% of the patient have benign disease, only like gallstones. Even there is gallstones. I told you in the previous lecture that gallstones have high incidence in the population. About 50% of the population have gallstones. So the patient may develop, may have another pathology with the gallstones. One of these is uh, malignant tumor of the carcinoma of the gallbladder. That's why any 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 colectomy should say it really for for uh, histopathology. And even after removal of the gallbladder, really uh, regarding me, any patient, oh yeah, after removal of the gallbladder, I open the gallbladder to see if there is mass localized mass in the gallbladder. We can do a resection of the liver bed of the gallbladder if there is suspicion of the tumor to ensure radical resection. So, malignant tumors of the gallbladder may present it, it is also, it is rare, very rare, but the presentation looks like benign condition. The patient looks like gold source present, may present with dyspepsia, abdominal pain, maybe jaundice, diagnosed by ultrasound, which is mass, a regular mass, with invasion of the liver, CT scan, MRCB, and both patients are presented with advanced disease by SF. I mean, the even at all age one, I have Hakika, I facing many patients with uh, yani, gallbladder carcinoma. They have multiple liver metastases. Sometimes you can do nothing for them because the tumor is disseminated at advanced stage. The only treatment, hopefully, to treatment is surgical resection. But this surgical resection can be done in less than 10%. Why? Because most of those patients have advanced tumor with multiple liver secondaries and multiple peritoneal metastases. I will show you a picture. The, so most of those patients with gallbladder carcinoma need just palliative treatment. So that's why the prognosis is poor and median survival rate approximately six months. So we should, if, if we are facing the patient with gallbladder carcinoma, we should do staging, any tumor, any tumor, say breast, stomach, liver, any tumor, we should do staging to know the proper management. Staging, it, يعني, need, we need to assess it of local disease, is it only localized to the gallbladder or there is invasion of the liver locally or invasion of the local surrounding structures? And also to detect the distant met metastases in the liver, multiple secondaries in the liver or in the peritoneal cavity or lymphatics or extra abdominal disease. So this is very important. So gallbladder cancer is very rare, have similar presentation to biliary tree disease like gallstones, diagnosed by ultrasound, a CT scan, most patients have advanced disease, and surgical resection uh, can be done only for less than 10%. The remainder receive palliative treatment only, the prognosis is poor, median survival approximately only six months. This picture shows laparoscopic staging in a patient with gallbladder carcinoma, demonstrating a gross peritoneal metastasis. The lab, one of the laparoscopy, not only therapeutic, laparoscopy can be used also as a diagnostic tool for staging, even for even see a stomach or and many many types of tumors, or we just investigate the patient, we do laparoscopy. Diagnostic laparoscopy. We have in the laparoscopy, you have ultrasound, and also we have, uh, yeah, we can see it among these as uh, shown in this picture, multiple uh, peritoneal metastases. We can do biopsy sometimes, even we have laparoscopic ultrasound. 
So a treatment of gallbladder carcinoma, the major, majority of patients have advanced disease at the presentation and are not candidates for, for surgical therapy. Surgery is indicated in only very selected cases. Cholecystectomy should be done, should be performed for all gallbladder polyps greater than one centimeter. To love, we are facing a lot of patients have polyp in the gallbladder. If this polyp less than one centimeter and it is regular with normal wall of the gallbladder and there is no liver metastasis or no other signs of malignancy, we can do just follow up of the patient. Regularly follow up every six months, for example, we can repeat the ultrasound. If the polyp is increased in size, becomes more than one centimeter, or irregularity develop in it, or distortion of the wall of the gallbladder, these are signs of malignancy, and so we should remove it. So polyp, polyps of the gallbladder less than one centimeter can be followed with seeding ultrasound, ultrasound to detect any changes in size or character. As the instance of malignancy in polyps less than one centimeter is extremely low. If there is a tumor of the gallbladder, malignant tumor, we should do radical any block resection. Any block, it means all the tumor, we have safe margin. We will not pass it through the tumor. We should be away of the tumor. Should remove a rim of normal tissue surrounding the tumor. This is called radical in block. Radical to remove, to ensure removal of all the malignant tumor with its surrounding. For example, the gallbladder with the surrounding rim of liver, part of the liver, liver bed, near the gallbladder. And our cut should be through the normal tissue, not pass through the tumor. We should uh, leave uh, what we call it safe margin safe margin of why because the tumor have uh, يعني, it is uh, microscopic and there are cells not only the macroscopical appearance of the tumor what is seen but also there are cells and these malignant cells are uh, not seen by uh, uh, naked eyes so we should remove part of normal tissue surrounding the tumor, really not only the gallbladder tumor, any tumor, stomach, breast, bowel, small intestine, large bowel, and any tumor, skin, any tumor, bone, any tumor, we should remove with the tumor, not only the macroscopical appearance of it, but also we should remove a rim of normal tissue surrounding the tumor, because there may be cells implanted not seen so that's why called radical in a block section and that may include segmental or extended hepatectomy bile duct section and regional lymphadenectomy should be considered in selected patients the aim is to remove the tumor entirely and achieve negative histopathological margins yani results of histopathology not only shows the tumor, but also the margin of the tumor should be free of malignant cells. For the majority of patients, a non-operative approach to, uh, uh, for CA gallbladder is only needed yeah, just palliation. As we mentioned, 90% they have advanced tumor myself with the, uh, unfortunately, with the liver metastasis. And so what are these? Palliative, palliation, it means not radical, just amelioration of the symptoms, just to relieve of the patient. For example, if the patient develops jaundice, obstructive jaundice, we can put a catheter, either through ERCP, this catheter, or percutaneous method. We can put ERCB through the mouth, ERCB put the catheter for the range of the this bile or percutaneous tea. Percutaneous tea through the skin, through the skin needle, pass it through the abdominal wall, through abdominal wall, through the skin, 
to the liver and this then after aspiration of oil and we enter in the biliary tree we can do dilatation and insertion of a catheter this is external drainage of the jaundice patient this is only palliative and the value of uh, adjuvant therapy is improving yani, uh, chemotherapy